we generally use the normalize effect to adjust the volume of a recording. There is also another effect called loudness normalization to adjust the volume level. There are some differences between these two, but it is important to understand both effects. Otherwise, you will not understand the submission requirements on many platforms. The normalize effect works based on the peak of the audio. For example, this is the peak for this recording. I have chosen this recording so that we can clearly distinguish the loudest point. If I play the audio, it touches zero in the meter. So this peak is the loudest it can be in Audacity or any other audio editing software. If I normalize the entire track, that peak will be adjusted, and the rest of the audio will be adjusted with the peak. I will go to the normalize effect, and you will understand what I am saying. If you look closely at the normalize configuration, it says normalize peak amplitude to. We set a new value for the peak amplitude. What will happen if I set minus 3 as the peak? Remember the peak is currently at 0, and I am setting minus 3. If you think normalize only increases volume level, you will be wrong here. Normalize adjusts the peak, so in this case, it will decrease the peak and overall volume of the recording. You can see the peak and other waveform decreased in vertical length after normalize. So the current peak is now minus 3 as we just set that. What will happen if I normalize again to minus 6 dB? Normalize sets the volume level of the audio and does not cause any distortion in the audio. It mainly changes the volume level. The tone or balance of the audio is unaffected by normalize. So you can normalize multiple times without altering the audio quality. You cannot use every audio effect multiple times without altering the balance of the audio. But with normalize, it is not an issue. With the value of minus 6, it will decrease further. It is important to understand why normalization increases or decreases the overall volume level. I will normalize this audio again. I will now normalize to minus 3 dB. So what should happen? If you say it will decrease further, then you have not understood normalize effect yet. This time the peak and overall volume will increase. Because the peak was at minus 6, and I set the new peak to minus 3. So a 3 dB increase on the audio level. The peak waveform controls the overall increase or decrease. For example, if I normalize this selection of the waveform, you will see a big increase in the waveform. I will normalize it to minus 3, and this time, it applies only to the selected part, not the whole waveform. You see how the overall waveform grew on the selected part, because there was more room to grow. It is important to understand why this happened. It is one of the key fundamentals of mastering or increasing the loudness of the audio. I will now go back to the original waveform from history. If you do not know it already, Audacity only keeps editing history of the current session. If I close Audacity, the history will be gone. Loudness normalization is an important effect in meeting requirements on many platforms. Many platforms specify the LUFS level or RMS level of the submitted audio. You can see LUFS when I selected perceived loudness in the dropdown. If I select RMS, it is changed to dB. If you look into ACX requirements, the audio has to be in between minus 18 dB to minus 23 dB RMS. You can set such a value using loudness normalization. Unlike normalize, loudness normalization does not use the peak value to adjust loudness to the other parts of the audio. For example, if I set it to minus 18 dB for RMS, you would see a uniform increase in the waveform. Unlike normalize, loudness normalization can cause heavy clipping or distortion in the audio. I will undo the loudness normalization and set another value. I will set an RMS of minus 10 dB, which will cause distortion or clipping. You can see the waveform is maxed out for the most part and clipped. It was an extreme example of loudness normalization and of course, you would not need to set such an extreme value. But you should understand the loudness normalization can cause clipping in the audio. We will see how to tackle those when it comes. I suggest you do some experiments on your audio with normalize and loudness normalization. Confidence in using these two effects will take you a long way. If you are watching this lecture on YouTube, it is part of my advanced audacity course. I am giving a heavy discount on the course building phase. You can pre-order this course from this Buy Me A Coffee page. I have already published some lectures on how to remove plosives efficiently. You can also check the curriculum. This course will take your Audacity editing skills to a whole new level. You will be able to edit and produce professional quality voiceovers and audiobooks confidently. You will become an advanced level Audacity user to use Audacity to its full potential. If you are editing voices for voiceover demos, or YouTube or online courses, I would recommend you take this course. If you want to become a professional VO artist, I would say it is a must-have course for you.
You will learn techniques like removing popping peas or plosives and mouth clicks. You will learn advanced EQ techniques and efficient voice processing with Audacity. You will find the link in the description. Enroll in the course and give yourself an amazing opportunity to uplift your skills. The discounted price is available in the pre-order phase. The late you are to pre-order, the more the price will increase.